So uh, we use Unreal Engine for our transfuser project. And what transfuser is, is basically it's a government funded program for graduates to essentially pitch an idea. The winning teams or kind of pick teams go forward in a 10 week period to make that prototype at which we displayed at EGX last week. And that's after that stage, after EGX, you then go forth to a pitch where you pitch the UK Games Fund for up to £25,000 in funding to help kickstart that company. So that's Transfuser in a nutshell, really. Um, so for the project, I'm Connor. Uh, I was the environment artist. Uh, and I'm Tom, I'm the lead designer on Tome Travellers. So Tome Travellers is, quick game overview for you, a fantastical adventure through strange literary worlds. The basic idea is that you play as these little characters that run around in a hub world and then find books. And then when you jump into them, you have this, um, you travel through the book and play through it and unlock things from it. So USBs, dynamic weapons, we have uh, all these different weapons you can see down here with fun magical uses, such as like getting that huge dude to get rid of stuff. Uh, Multi-genre worlds, which also feed into our customization. So every time you go through a book, you'll unlock new features and be able to add them to your character, which aids with customization and also adds small buffs to the characters. So that's a quick overview. Um, in terms of using Unreal Engine, for design, for the game design, we were, um, I was in this a lot rather than the level design because because of the 10 week project, we really wanted it to be as polished as possible. So designing stuff like the weapons for the, for the original design that we, we had um, to get them really feeling good because we originally focused on physics arms. So you would waggle the sticks around, that's how you would attack things. And we had to really get that down um, as best as possible for the 10 weeks because it's such a short period of time to try and build a, quite a well-polished prototype. Uh, for the level design, I again, it was very quick turnaround for it. Uh, multiple iterations, but I'm really happy with actually what we ended up with, ended up with at the end, which we do we would do have a build on us, so we can probably set it up later on or something. Uh, yeah, in terms of the workflow for de for design, again, it was just mainly focused on trying to get as much as possible out of those ten weeks. So we did do nine to five working in the office using Futureworks here as a as a studio space, and. Um, from that, we then did work at home as well, did as much work on it as possible to try and get the best possible product for EGX to showcase. So, the design one. So, when using art for this project, especially, the original idea was we were going to go with two art styles. The kind of main menu slash start screen would be the idea that you're in someone's basement, which would kind of be like high res PBR assets. So, um, making high res assets in a 10 week period, you'd have to kind of sort out your time evaluation. Um, kind of predict what's going to be made where, so the table is an example of what was in the start screen. Um, but then the, the majority of the game would be stylized PBR, which I've never really worked on in Unreal before, so this was kind of a big learning curve for me. Um, especially kind of setting up the assets to look bright and colourful to attract um, people to play the game at UGX, because that was kind of, we wanted to attract as many people to see what was wrong with the game essentially, because we'd only made it in 10 weeks and then we can take what we learn to move forward. So in terms of the assets, I used Maya, Substance Painter, and ZBrush. That way, ZBrush comes in handy for stylized because you can add all your little funky details in. Maya, just to block out your overall shapes or make some basic objects that would be in the background. And Substance Painter is probably the best texture and package I've used, um, purely because when you export for Unreal Engine, it has a preset, much like Quixel, but the in like kind of texture and package viewport is essentially what you get in Unreal without setting up all these complex kind of technical art heavy materials inside UE4. Um, so Substance Painter helped us a lot in terms of time because whatever I'd do in Substance was literally what it looked like in Unreal. Sure, I had to do some tweaks in the post-process to get it more saturated or um, more appealing as it would be. Um, but yeah, so in terms of materials, it was pretty much just take the textures that came out of Substance Painter and plug them in. Um, but that was pretty much it. Um, I mean, the most complex material I must have like kind of fiddled about with was the sky, um, but I just tweaked a lot of the material instance parameters from the UE for basic sky, and then kind of added my own parameters, which you could then tweak later down the line for kind of final adjustments and coloring. Uh, the water as well was quite a tricky one because with the water, you ha I put in a depth kind of opacity thing where whatever entered the water, it gave it a ring around. So it was kind of, gave it a, light, a little stylized realistic effect that was dynamic as well with the characters running through it. Um, being someone who's not heavily a technical artist, 
to overcome that was quite a big feat. And it looked really good, so it worked. <laughs> um, so yeah, with the post process, that's kind of what I kind of went to town on to kind of really push the um, the stylized feature. As you can see, we went through a lot of iterations. Um, that's just using a color um, lookup table. If any of you have played with those, they're absolutely amazing things. You essentially take a print screen of your Unreal Engine product, um, uh, project, sorry, take it into Photoshop and then just overlay, overlay, overlay things to get it how to look what you want. And then you can grab uh, the color lookup table off the UE4 website and you essentially take all these overlays and put them onto the lookup table, export that as a PNG or a Targo, put it into the post processing and you get pretty much this shadows, highlights, colors, whatever you want, um, similar to the Photoshop that you've just kind of worked in. And then obviously with the post process, I can push colors up in saturation. Um, but obviously you don't want to go over the top of Bloomer except stuff like that because it's stylized and you don't, you don't get that. One thing I will note on is um, for the trees, um, the foliage tool is actually an amazing tool in Unreal Engine 4 because it saved us so much time instead of me like fumbling, sticking planes all over everything. Uh, <coughs> basically the tree is actually just a cylinder that I've sculpted in ZBrush with a sphere on top and I've used the foliage tool to like paint over leaves <laughs> over a sphere. It works exceptionally well, and it comes with its own culling, so you don't have to worry about that, so it's extremely efficient. Um, and it's actually using the same alphas as the grass is, but you can't actually tell, because it's, I just did turn the density up. Um, and all the grass was made with material instances, so you can see that we can just push values to get kind of highlights on the grass in the bottom. I know that's not the final project, because we went for something more saturated and colourful, rather than kind of, um, I don't know, Breath of the Wild-ish. So yeah, that's pretty much the art um, in a nutshell, really, really simple kind of objects, but then all detailed in ZBrush and then substance paint to the rescue. So in terms of some of the problems we've encountered in the 10 weeks, uh, physics, was, because our original idea was so physics heavy and we never really touched physics before in Unreal Engine, that was quite a problem for us. But, um, so for example, the sheep, they're, they're all physics objects that you can hit around, but that would cause problems such as when you hit something into another player, it would cause them to fly off and then the camera would mess up because they're trying to find out where everyone is. Um, so I think that feeds into the local co-op again to do with the camera. Um, setting up that camera was quite interesting, so we had to like get all these four players and then find the midpoint of each of them and zoom in and out according to where they were, but then it would get stuck on certain things and people would get stuck and then fly off because of that. It was always fun, but the um, so what we did was basically made it so that the physics objects wouldn't try. And, we tried to constrain them as much as possible, but still find that balance between it being fun and then flying off, but still being able to control the characters. So the physics objects, such as the the sheep and the chickens in the in the level, you can just hit them everywhere. But when they hit a character, it won't send them flying anymore, which it used to do. Uh, scope was another one as well because our project is is very ambitious. I'd say with a lot of um, stuff to go into it, a lot of ideas. We had to really bring the scope down, especially during the 10 weeks. Going forward now, we can have a be bit of a better idea as to what we want to achieve. But for the 10 weeks, we really had to keep our project very focused and try and fit everything that we wanted to show in that one level, which I really think we did, we did achieve. Uh, the combat could have been a bit better. It was a bit sluggish using the physics, but overall, I'm really, like, really proud. We're all really proud of what we've managed to achieve in 10 weeks. Uh, yeah, and that feeds again into the, the reception. People really liked it at EGX. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of kids coming up and playing it, and then just whacking sheep about, which is always fun. Uh, yeah, so that was really good to see. Yeah, I mean, we our original target audience was young children, but uh, <laughs> immediately we saw couples in the late thirties, forties just coming and having to go and having just as much fun as the kids were. So. Um, our, our actual receptions was brilliant. Um, we didn't expect a game like this to be received so well among such a large audience because we originally aimed for ridiculously stupid humour, which we got in the end because you could pick up a, one of our randomly generated weapons, which could be a sausage with a fish on the end, or a hockey stick with a mop end, and everyone just loved it. So I think we were all really proud about the reception, especially, like I said, we're hammering on about it a lot, um, the 10 week thing, but. I'm sure, as you all know, as devs, 10 weeks isn't a long time at all, especially if you've got like a showcase like EGX looming on you where there's thousands of people. And it broke a few times, the game, because uh, Unreal Engine Physics kind of... We never really smashed 
the physics properly because we were all, I'm the artist, so I was pretty much just like decorating, 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 making sure everything's as pretty as possible. Um, and then a lot of the other kind of team names had to help on the programming side. Um, so there were a few bugs with it, but with physics especially, Unreal Engine's very nice. It does most of the stuff for you, um, which helped us massively, especially with the physics assets that come with a skeleton rig. Um, you can set those up and set a ragdoll on, which helps for character animations. So our floppy arms was pretty much easily done. It was the, the hard part about it was controlling them with the thumbsticks, which took a while. And because that took a while, when it came to the destructibles, uh, we had two ways of doing destructibles in the game, which was the kind of destructibles that's already built into Unreal, where you basically crash or mesh. Or we did it in Mayo, where we'd essentially pre-make pre the destructibles, and then on hit, we'd make a blueprint that would shatter them. Um, the problem we found with the destructibles that Unreal made was that if you stood on a piece of destructible, uh, your character would turn into an astronaut <laughs> and just go <laughs> into space. But um, we, we've now kind of clued on how to fix that by removing collision, which is should be simple. Yeah. Maybe. So the, I think the thing to take away is in those 10 weeks, we learned a hell of a lot of, of stuff to, to, to do with Unreal Engine, but just to do with like quick game development in general. Um, and it was a really good experience. So thank you. Any questions? plugin uh, previously and I found that more kind of easier for designer especially. I mean most of the tileable materials I made in return in regards to landscape materials I did in ZBrush and just made them tileable. But for the substance painter I literally hit export UE4 packs and then you've got the red, blue, green channels of which you have your metalness, roughness in that you can just plug in. And you get pretty much the same. I know this isn't high res PBR so there'd obviously be some technical aspects if you come to make something to look like Deus Ex, but for stylized, it just works simply. You can just plug them in and you get the result you want. Obviously, you've got to tweak post-process like I did, but yeah, it was pretty straightforward and saved us a whole heap of time. Yeah. Why are you planning to be involved with this project? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so we actually were one of the six teams that went through to the pitching stage after EGX, and we can't unveil the result as of Monday, but... Um, Let's say we have been planning, now knowing the result. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so. <laughs> so yeah, we're, um, I, I've taken a little step back from the project because I've been drafted onto the cube project, like Ben was speaking about earlier. So um, Tom's kind of the main head moving it forward. But we've, in terms of what we learned from EGX, what people want from the game, and what people expect the game to be going onwards, we're making some massive design changes in terms of scope and gameplay. Yeah, so we're, we're keeping most of the, well, all of the assets, so just reusing them in a different way. So the physics stuff, we're kind of moving back on a little bit and mm -hmm. making it more animation based, uh, which we think suits suits more because you look at games like, for example, we use the ukulele and things like that. If you get them really tight, really feeling really nice, then it feels really good to play, and that's the kind of thing we're hoping to go forward with. Uh, we're hoping to get a proper prototype together in six months, which we can use for and investor pitching and things like that. And then from there, just try and make it make it good. <laughs> yeah. um, with it being so stylized, have you already got a style for the audio? And is audio something that's uh, something you're thinking about? Yeah. You're looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> so from the moment you go in, or is it going to be later? Or? So for the audio for the project uh, that we have in 10 weeks, we didn't really have any audio till the last five days. And because all the art was already in Engine, we had a couple of friends who came in and helped with the audio who made humorous audio, which worked really well. Um, I think for down the line, we'd be working with audio earlier because audio is just as important as we found. <coughs> the audio on its own probably helped us massively rather than the art. The programming may have let the game down slightly, but the art and audio definitely pushed the game to help us get through to the next stage. Um, did that answer your question? Anyone else? Cool. No? Cool. Cheers, guys. Cool.